All right, we are working on a Silver Reed 860 ribber. And so common, so many times we hear, my ribber doesn't match up to my bed correctly, and I'm not sure why. So we're going to start with the basics. We have this from a knitter having that problem, but I was told find the problem, fix the problem, so the ribber can go back to work. <clears throat> we went online to the manual for the Silver Reed 860, and we got a nice view of the clamp that goes with the main bed to mount the ribber. Normally, you have one of these little clamps. Wait, wait, wait. Let me catch up to you. Okay. Right here. Mm -hmm. That holds the bed through this slot. She's going to come back. Here I come. There we go. Okay. That little clamp goes in this slot. Holds it flat to the bed. Now, to mount the ribber, these ribber clamps come in all shapes and sizes. Most we of them look similar, <clears throat> though, so it can get mixed up. If you have multiple machines or you buy an estate lot, they may not be with the correct machine. That's right, and we have a bucket full of them. First thing you want to do is make sure that both the clamps look the same, so match them up in pairs. Then, if you actually go and download the manual or look at the manual online, <clears throat> it gives you a very nice picture of the clamps for the Silver Reed River and how it mounts to the bed. And we're going to actually show you that last on this series of shots. We'll take the bed off the clamp and show you how it mounts last. Right now, we want to strictly stick with the river. Now, you hold the camera there, and I'm going to show you. I have completely dismantled the what we call the drop-down portion of the mount itself. <clears throat> this is the part that goes to the table and to the bed. Now we'll get the camera to... Alright, you can see the tip of the needle can't get under there. It's as close to the flat of the surface of the bed as it can get. The clamp is firmly on the table and that's where it's supporting we couldn't see you. Let me back out. Okay. okay. Show us where it's supporting. This is where it's in a position to support the weight of the river and hold it lined up with the front of the bed. And there are places to adjust the alignment, and we're going to go into it one step at a time. Now we're over there, and I'm going to show you this piece goes in the slot, and the little protuberance sticking up here, the post, goes in there. Now, let's we'll have another look. I think this is helpful. It almost comes to a point, the, the part right. that he's describing. Now, later we'll show you there's an alignment plate here, but let's don't get ahead of ourselves. Here's what I want to show you. This fits flat to the surface of the bed. And now you'll notice you got a little bit of play in this clamp, but this also sits flat Trying to, get to the we, table. There we go. I got a better shot. But... You can't get under this. It's sitting right down here on the bed. And this is the support that you take the clamp that came off of the bed when you took it up to put the river clamps on. goes right here. And we showed you that on the other side. All right, these are the pieces that come off of this base plate to make the drop-down brackets on either side of the river bed. And I want to show you this. That's a pretty heavy piece of metal right there, but it's got enough grease on it that it'll partly stick to my finger. And so that's way too much. So one of the things that people will say is that my machine won't drop down like it's supposed to. Well, it's that old grease that's between this plate and this plate and this spacer that's preventing that from moving smoothly. So we're going to do some cleanup. Then I'll show you how to put these back together again. Because when they're really, really stiff, and this piece is not moving like it should, you have to take it apart, clean it up. And it's not that hard. It would be easy for any machine owner. You can see now, I think, the grease that's on that. I can see a white outline. Is that what yeah, we're looking at? Yeah, that's like? the grease right there that was on this and on this plate. And there should be some lubricant, but this is a little <clears throat> much and a little hard. Well, yeah, this is old grease and it's dried up. We're going to put some good silicon back on there. And then we'll do a reassembly for you. All right, now when you 
take this clamp off of the bed. We're working backwards. I'll show you how to put it on the bed. When you take this clamp assembly off of the bed, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this piece, this silver piece, on a post, two posts, with these nuts and these flat washers on there. But what I want to show you is what you're actually looking at. You'll see this little lever sticking out when it's all assembled. And this is your adjustment lever. I'm going to show you the clever design here. This is the post you will see with the nut on the end of this threaded post. But if you'll notice, it's riding a slot that when you move this lever on the outside, this screw will go along the distance of the slot. And on the back of here, there's a hole in this adjuster that goes in a little tab end on the back side. So the whole assembly looks like that with this sticking through to make your adjustment. <clears throat> and this is all you're going to see from your side. Now, here, look, I'm going to see if I can get the camera to see that there is a flat spot on this. Let's see. Fingers out of the way, but there's a flat side right there where that piece of metal is riding and curved, and then it comes around. Is that close enough for you uh, to see? It's getting very grainy. You go farther away and let okay. me try to focus. But I think that maybe There's the flat surface yeah, right there. Yeah. Okay. That flat surface <clears throat> actually goes in here to hold this in position so that the screw, the nut, will tighten down on it. Hang on. We can't see the nut. Okay. There you go. The nut will actually fasten down on the screw. It'll be clear in a minute. It's just you have to get this alignment correct because this rides in this slot up and down with this underneath it. And I'm going to go ahead and make the assembly, and then I'll show you the parts. All right, now, when this is assembled, there's a spring that goes between this post and this post. So normally what you're going to see is in this position, and the spring is pulling this lever up in respect to how you would see it on the machine. Spring is here to here. Now, watch what happens. We're going to line it up so it's straight. But here is your adjusting lever here. And I want you to watch these two surfaces right here. Our little gray intermediate plate and the actual top of the adjuster. Because when I lift this, see how that slid up? Mm -hmm. Okay. What that would do is bring the needles of the river closer to the needle of the bed. So on both sides, on either end, there's that amount of adjustment that you can make to bring them closer together by loosening these two nuts. And as those who use rivers know, the distance between the two beds is quite a matter of concern. You cannot get both beds knitting properly. You can't even get the river arm to stay properly seated and attached if you don't have that distance right. So that's where the adjustment is. Right. Again, this, it is. this is a silver reed 860. The specifics may differ a bit from model to model. That's correct. All right, I just assembled the second one, and here, let me show you what can happen. Here's the first one we did. Our little adjusting lever, spring's gonna go right there. Here's our two nuts. Spring's gonna go right there. There's our two nuts. Hmm. What did we do? Oh, we can get that on backwards because it's just a flat piece that sticks out. Normally you do see that. Right now you do not. If you'll give me one second, I'm going to take this one apart. I wanted you to see what can happen. And then I'll put this one together. And on. actually that would make the river much harder to adjust, wouldn't it? Even yes, though it the would. adjustment exists. Yeah, there, the adjustment is very small. We've shown you. It's only a fraction of an inch that it moves it, but it still would be almost impossible with it on this side. How would you get to the lever well, to adjust? Yeah, you'd have to kind of do like this, mm -hmm. but then this one's going to be trying to get into the act. But give me one second, and we'll go through this one step at a time.
All right, now we're going to put this back together. First thing we do is lots of silicon. You know me. But this is really what keeps it moving smoothly, and you can always add more silicon to it. Now, this base plate goes on a fixed post. Our portable screw goes into the hole. There's two holes, a big one and a small one. That's easy enough. Our adjuster sticking out on this side. Let's see, what would you call that side? It's the side opposing this outer piece. Right, it's away from the outer clamp. It's also on the lower portion. It's on the tang that holds the spring on the base. There's a tang that holds the spring on the lever, and there's a fixed tang that holds the spring. So this is going towards the spring base of this. Now, here we go. This is the slot that has to line up with the two flat sides of the screw. Let me point to the screw because okay. your hand keeps blocking Yes, it. there's the screw. And it must be so that the two flat sides are parallel with the sides of the base so that this slot will fit down on it. And, of course, this Oh, one, yeah, it wouldn't actually go on if you didn't have that's right. the screw in. That's correct. But what this does is this holds this floating screw in position when you go to tighten the nut down on it, otherwise this would turn round and round. So this is the lock to let you tighten the screw down. This is the slot that slides this post to let the adjustment take place. But here's our important thing is that little tab right there has to go in the hole. So the best thing to do is line the hole up right between these two posts and that way you know where you want to get that in. And we wiggle our screw a little bit. There. And there we go. Now, a finger to keep it in place, flat washer, lock washer, nut. And, and it, it must be in that order. Yes. You actually are going to tighten it down when you're finished till you close the lock washer. I'll show you that in a second. But I bet you're going to tell us not to tighten it down till the till second one's in place. Everything is assembled. He you always got, says that. Well, it's a good rule of thumb. You can see there, possibly, there's a gap between the two ends. I'm, I'm zooming. Okay. Yes, we can see. Okay. They're offset slightly. So when you close it down, you're going to squeeze those back into line. So you know when it's correct. Flat washer, lock washer, nut, and it's on our fixed post. And let's see if we got it right, because if we did, this will adjust. And there it goes. There's its length of adjustment. And you see, it'll come down to here. And the reason there's a hole in that is because sometimes you have to stick a little piece of metal in. A tool or yeah, something. Yeah, to give you a little bit of purchase. My fingertips are touch tough enough that even on the machine, I can make that adjustment. But particularly if... a if it's a lady doing it and if the machine has been sitting so yes. the oil in it's a little bit stiff you right. you have old lithium now you'll notice i am tightening this down as tight as it needs to be it actually won't turn anymore but look what we got there's still plenty of movement for this lever which is why it's got its spring load on it i'm going to snug this one down even though we're going to have to loosen these again when we go to make this adjustment now let me point this out this machine originally came with a wrench that was this thickness so that it'll go over the top of this nut, but it doesn't stick up above the nut because you have a limited amount of room to get in and do that. A so, lot of those wrenches are going to be long gone. What would you recommend the ladies or gentlemen who are knitting with them buy? Well, this one came in a little kit of metric wrenches. And this was a Craftsman set, but you can buy, it's a little plastic pouch, and it'll say metric or SAE, Standard American And we want metric. You want metric. And what it has is it's got half sizes and mixed sizes. See, I've got a 7 on this end and an 8 on that end. And I keep a bunch of them in my Millimeters, 7 yes. and 8 millimeters. 7 and 8 millimeters. But they'll all come with a different size on each end, one open, one closed. And you see, you're not going to have room to get a closed one. No, over not, the top. not once it's on the machine yeah, you're and you're crawling under it. You're going to have to reach in there like this and do that. But yeah, if you get a pouch of metric 
Mixed metric wrenches is what these are called because they're boxed in on one end and, and open on the other. And they're a small, what they call an ignition set in some kits because they're all small, nothing bigger than a 10 millimeter. But it goes down to a 1.5 in some sets. Okay. Now we have the riverbed out on this table and Jack is at one end of it. All right, let's talk about proper orientation because... It, it confuses people. I took it all apart. It was easy to come apart. Oops. How did I get that apart? All right. This is the top of the river bed, of course. And since this is the piece that's going to mount to the main bed, this must be the orientation. And we know this. Aha, look where my lever is that's going to let me make the adjustment to drop the bed down on the outside. So since you've got two of these... You see, you could mount it here. It would be the same thing. This is at the top. This is the top of the river. But your adjustment's on the inside. So these are the things you're looking for. And here's a dead giveaway. There's a slot here. And when it's properly seated, it surrounds this piece right here, like so. Now, how do I get that back on there? Here's the mount post. And you will notice... There's a gap underneath this hip, and that's what we're pivoting on. So what we've got to do is get it all in here, then get it all in here. And that's how we do it, just like that. Now, rotate around. Rotate around. Now we've got to work our way down through. Ah, there we go by opening this up like we normally would. If I weighed as much as a river, it would work smoothly. Here we are. What I've done is I've put the spring back on so that the lever now is spring-loaded to a locked position. And you're going to say, well, gee, you know, you turned it this way, you popped it on, and what's to prevent it from just turning this way once it's out of this slot right here and coming off? Well, this is what you're going to have to know when you get started. There is a little brass screw, and it lives in this hole right here. And when you look at it, it's going to look like a thousand other little brass screws that are on this bed. And you're going to say to yourself, hmm, why would I take that out? Well, the reason you take that out is so this will turn far enough to come off. So when you get it, it's actually going to look like this. And you're going to loosen it and pull this up and try to turn it, and it won't turn because of that screw head. But to get them off, all you need to do is take that screw right there out, set it to one side, and then this will come out, come out of the lock that's in at the bottom by spring-loading this up, and then it'll rotate far enough. It helps to get on up into it so that it's got plenty of room to turn on this side, but you must remove that screw to get it right. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about here is this plate came off of this end, and what I'm going to do is put my screwdriver up under the edge here to let us see what we're talking about. This plate goes into this, ah, come out of there, like so. And you will see there's a raised piece, and when you put it on the bed, that post is going to go into that raised piece right there. And there's a screw that holds this. Now, if you'll notice, it's going into a slot, and I'm going to have to We can't the, see the slot right. because the screwdriver's in the okay. way. There we go, I got uh, it. See, now it goes into a slot, though this piece is actually round. Now, this is the point where we're going to talk about the problem that occurred with this machine that I have seen with a lot of machines. There's a complex bend right here. Let me get it up where we can rotate it. Between this piece and the piece under it, and then this base. So the base comes out, bends down, and then this bends straight up. This is perpendicular to this, but it's got an offset in it because it has to work around the gate pegs when it's in position. These will bend. If you drop the river, say you're carrying it and it slips out of your hand on one end, when this hits the floor, it's going to bend it. 
This and one of was, course, since all of these machines are frequently inherited or bought secondhand, right, you right. don't really know if anyone ever dropped it. Right. And the thing is that it not only will bend like it'll go squoosh this way, it'll also twist. And what'll happen is, I've seen it a lot, the other end is floats and this end is fixed. This is your racking end, so it's fixed. The other end floats. You're supposed to put the floating end in and move it over till this end matches the bed slot. A lot of people, I've seen them, and I've done it myself, you put the floating end in, you're looking over here, and all of a sudden that floating end floats right out. If it does, you can lose it in the balance. This can hit the floor, hit the table, hit the other bed, and it'll bend these. Now, they can be straightened, and I have straightened lots of them. It's not really a do-it-yourself thing, and I will tell you why. If you'll notice, when I try to put this in, it doesn't want to go in smoothly. And one of the reasons is because I had to straighten this end, and I've changed the size of that hole. These metals are hard, but they're not case-hardened. So when you bend them, and you tap on them, and you twist them, and you put them in the vise, it changes the dimensions, the thickness, the width. And now it's changed the size. So you'll of that need hole. to true the hole, yeah. and that's just more than most home right. knitters are ready to do. It you really have to have some pretty intricate files to get in there, clean it back up, shape it, and I have to put it in the vise in several different directions, and use an anvil in the vise to try and straighten these. So they can be done, but it might not be a DIY. All right, here we go. We got it all cleaned up, and I'm going to simulate the screw being in place. You see that it must ride up and down that slot smoothly because, again, this is one of the adjustments to bring the river further to or further away from the main bed. And that's us right there, and you might be able to see the hole now. Now we're testing the river with the repaired clamps that align it correctly. Just FYI, this is Bernay Softy Baby at stitch size 4 on both beds. Here we're just knitting plain ribbing. And it's doing just fine. Now we should be able to rack and still get ribbing. I'm going to go four clicks because I still need the needles to alternate as they are now. But I see that I actually went the wrong direction. So back we come. And I want it to go this way. All right, well, let's see how it knits now. If the first row will feel stiffer because you've stretched the stitches. Now keep watching here what happens as I do rack the other way back to the first position. No problem. Here's what we've been knitting. Of course, it's stretched out at the bottom where it attaches to the comb. Here's where I began racking, and with one-by-one one ribbing, it's not very dramatic. You can see those bumps on the edge where, let's see, the line of stitching right here, move up a little so they can see, it now becomes the edge line. So there is a shift. It's much more dramatic in other racking patterns, but all I'm doing today is testing to make sure it works. And it does, and it's a good sign that both sides are knitting nicely. Nobody tried to drop any stitches, even when I racked.